everyone. Um, this is my talk, Using a Cloud to Manage a Cloud at sysadminminiconf.linux.conf.au. So first off, fairly obvious sort of question, uh, who am I? So hey, I'm Alex. Uh, over there is Andrew. Over there is uh, Anuj. Um, we are dev slash sysadmins over at Orion VM, and we've been using cubes as part of our work for the last three or so years. Um, so first off, uh, who has heard of Orion VM? Anyone? Yeah, some people, yeah. So um, we are a white label cloud provider, which is kind of a bit strange for some people to, to, to hear. So first off, uh, who here has heard of like uh, Kogan Mobile or like TPG Mobile or those sorts of companies? Like, yeah? So who here thinks that Kogan runs around Queensland putting up um, mobile phone towers? Anyone? Like, no one? Yeah. Um, so we, so Kogan goes and they contract with another company that gives them access to those towers. We do a similar thing just for cloud. So that's kind of a, a short way of explaining that. So general agenda. Um, so Cubes is, I mean, it, it gets a lot of security related press. Like actually, first off, um, who here's heard of Cubes before, has run into it previously? Oh yeah, yeah, that's a decent number of people. Um, so. This is going to be at least a somewhat security related talk, but for sysadmins, sysadmin security. So why should we protect sysadmins? Secondly, what is cubes and how does that relate to the first point? Um, third, not to be spoiling, but there are isolations provided by cubes and why are those useful in that context? And then we'll wrap that up with some recommended hardware in terms of, um, so what, like, if you have particular hardware, is it likely to run? Or if you're looking to buy new hardware, what should you go and grab? And then finally finishing off with some Q&A. So to start off with, the um, threat model, because you need a threat model for uh, security talk. Um, the issue at its core is you have two, uh, two curves that are changing. On the one hand, uh, exploits are getting cheaper by the day. They're getting more commonplace by the day, um, which is in and of itself problematic. On the other hand, uh, sysadmins are protecting more and more valuable uh, systems, and the users on those, um, on those systems are themselves becoming more valuable as, for example, more valuable data is being uploaded to them. So between the two of those, you've got a recipe for disaster. And what is the standard answer? Well, there are a whole bunch of different answers, generally from people trying to sell you something. My answer to this is cubes. So what is cubes? The standard tagline that you would generally see is it is a reasonably secure operating system. Some people would say that's an understatement. I would say that it's a reasonable interpretation. I agree with that to the point that I would say that most operating systems are unreasonably insecure at the moment. And you have to go through and say, well, how do they go through and, and get that, um, that reasonable security? Like, are they going the OpenBSD style or what have you? And the answer is they're getting security through isolation, which is, at the end of the day, the only thing you can really do to, to help mitigate things. Um, and so you can see the, the quote that you can't hit what you can't see. That is security by isolation in a nutshell. And you'll see how that works throughout the talk. So cubes, the operating system, consists of a series of cubes, like not the plural, like the singular, um, which are like which you can think of as isolated containers, generally of desktop applications, that come together into the whole thing, running on top of the Zen uh, hypervisor. So each one of those isolated containers is a Zen virtual machine. The management VM, which is the interesting part here, is also a Zen virtual machine. But unlike most virtual machines that you would generally run into, you log into that. Like, it is your desktop. You see it on HDMI. When you uh, type in on your keyboard, that is what you are seeing. So just as a quick thing, this is a Cube's laptop that is running on management. Well, what you are seeing right now is coming from the management um, VM, and you'll see exactly how that works later on. Um, is it usable? In somewhat like a la an Arch Linux way, it is very usable, in that if you have no understanding of Linux, if you have no understanding of virtual machines, it's very easy to get cut on um, sharp edges. Uh, it's not completely polished. But if you have a reasonable understanding, you have a reasonable way of troubleshooting, i.e., maybe if you're a sysadmin, Anyone? 
um, then yeah, it's a very usable operating system as we've found. So here's a quick sort of a thing. So that is a Cube's uh, desktop. Like that's what you would see if you're looking at a monitor. So uh, who here recognizes that's XFCE? Yeah? Oh, okay. Um, so it's XFCE with some tweaks. Like if you look at the top of those taskbars, they're funny colors. What's up with that? If you look at the right there, you notice there are names in those brackets. What's up with that? That's a very interesting set of questions. So let's take a look behind the curtains on this. So you have the cube on the right, which is running Firefox on our favorite website, uh, linuxconf.au. That right window is a screenshot taken from within that cube. That is all it can see. That white background there is what it thinks the rest of the desktop is. And then on the, the right-hand side there, you have the Vault VM, generally called the Vault VM because you're storing secret stuff in there. Um, and you have its version of what it thinks the whole window is. And again, it's all white for everything that isn't itself. Also worth noting here that the, um, uh, the title decorations and all the rest don't exist. And that's because we don't trust the cubes to render their own title bars. We do that for it. Um, and so when you look down in that middle part there, you've got both of them together in what looks to be a very standard Linux style environment, but under the hood, it's completely different from what you would generally see. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and so that previously was XFCE. Uh, that's a lot more sort of user friendly, especially if you're not um, super familiar with tiling window managers. Uh, it also has i3 support. So we generally use i3. It works, uh, works very well. So going back somewhat, um, one of the major um, sort of wins that you get from cubes is very good network isolation. So um, it's OK. So who here has had like contracting work? We have like multiple customers and multiple VPNs, and you're like trying to deal with all of that, like many people. Yeah, like, I mean, it is a real pain in the neck. Um, with cubes, you can basically go up to it and say, hi, you are a cube for this customer. You can access their VPN and nothing else. You can access this customer's VPN and nothing else. And then if you look down the bottom there, you see that red uh, cube there. That can access the internet, but none of the VPNs. And this is all managed through that management VM. So it's not configuration inside there that can break or be compromised or what have you. It's all, you, you can almost think about it as being externally managed. Um, and then if you look further down there, you've got that Vault VM, which is storing all your secrets, and it has absolutely no um, connection to the internet, which is exactly what you want out of a Vault. Like, I mean, what point, like what's the point of a Vault if it's uh, wide open? Uh, anyone? So, yeah. And speaking of vault isolation, so it has no internet access. That was pretty straightforward shown in the last slide. It also has no PCIe devices. So the nice thing about that is because, actually, taking a step back here. So uh, a nice catchphrase is the IOMMU is like a firewall for PCIe devices. Not as catchy as the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, but hey, we're techies. So, we've, so what Cubes does is it manages the IOMMU to work out what um, hardware peripherals or what have you can access what Cubes, can access what data. So for example, um, a reasonable, well, malware that is becoming more and more common is malware targeting, for example, your Wi-Fi driver. Oh, sorry, your Wi-Fi, like the actual firmware sitting inside your Wi-Fi device. So for most standard sort of laptops, you go through, you send a series of attack packets, compromise that firmware, and then you use its uh, privileged position on the PCIe bus to just reach into RAM and steal secrets, steal keys, or replace, say, bits of the kernel with more convenient bits of the kernel that you had laying around. Under cubes, because you have this IOMMU um, sort of a firewall between things, even if your Wi-Fi card is compromised, when it tries to reach into your uh, Vault VM and access your, your secret passwords, it, it can't do that, which personally, I find comforting. And yeah. So this, I think, is very cool. So um, also, 
uh, just as a naming thing, you can name your cubes however you want. Vault is somewhat of a convention. Work is somewhat of a convention. Um, but what this shows um, is <clears throat> essentially a remote connection through VChan. So VChan is like a, a cube to cube uh, Unix socket, which is neat. Um, but it's run through DOM0. So DOM0 is another name for that management VM that you look at it, that you log into. And because it's managed through DOM0, it has a series of access control rules that you can set up either through configuration. Um, you can even have groups of cubes that can have various rules. Or you can go through and say, ask me. So in this example, you're, you've got a work VM that's connected to a customer site. Uh, it needs your SSH key. Well, why should it have your SSH key? That's just asking for your SSH key to get leaked in some respect. So what you go through and do is you say, hey, work VM, when you want to go through and access SSH, you go through and ask um, using a, a connection back to the management VM to say, hi, I would like access to this SSH key. That dialog box will pop up saying, hey, are you expecting this? Because if you're not expecting this, that is a good time to be suspicious. Um, and if you are expecting it, then yeah, you go through, you hit OK, and it can just run. But the really neat thing about this is that's an example. It wasn't a special case. You can, like, cubes in and of itself is built of a series of building blocks, and you can build your own things on top of this. So, for example, a GPG agent just works the same way, but you can do this for basically anything that takes a TCP or a Unix socket. And that's neat, at least in my opinion. So, yep, USB is a Lovecraftian nightmare. I think anyone who's touched security will get that. The major issue with a lot of this is that your USB key can be basically anything. You can go through, plug it in, and it will be suddenly a keyboard typing malicious commands, suddenly an Ethernet device trying to DHCP your, your computer. Um, that is a problem, especially given that the Linux kernel has an awful lot of surface area around things that are accessible through USB. Um, especially once you start including things like, hey, I'm a malicious file system. Like, I mean, how many file systems, especially given all the esoteric ones in the kernel, properly fuzz against very malicious um, file systems and the like? So what Cubes does is it isolates USB. And by the way, you don't need to just have a single isolated USB, um, USB cube. You can have multiple if you feel like it. But this is the standard sort of a case where you have a laptop or what have you. So you have your USB keyboard or what have you. It connects into a USB HBA, which is a fancy way of saying USB card or the USB chip or whatever that's actually running USB. Um, it then connects back into SysUSB via PCIe, locked down via the IOMMU. So even if something is overriding the USB control of firmware, uh, it can't suddenly start going nuts. Um, SysUSB then talks via VChan into DOM0, which is that management VM you look at when you log in. It then pops up um, a message box. So if someone has given you a malicious USB key that's going to pretend to be a keyboard, that message box will come up and say, oh, hey, this is a keyboard. Do you expect this to be a keyboard? And if you're like, no, this is not a keyboard. What do you think? Like, what are you talking about? Then all of a sudden, all those key presses go to nowhere, and it, it can't do anything. But if you are expecting a keyboard, you hit OK, and then everything just runs. And the nice thing about this is all of this complexity is hidden away from the user, and a lot of this just works TM. Uh, some terms and conditions apply, but in general, it, it just works more than it has any right to. Um, and this also works for things that aren't USB keyboards. Um, and yeah, so just going back to hardware isolation and the IOMMU, which I talked on uh, earlier. Uh, thing on the left is, for example, a standard um, sort of like web browsing VM or what have you. So if you looked at that web browsing VM, it had no devices. If you looked a little closer, it had no USB devices. How does that work? Because there's a whole bunch of UI over there that when you click those things, the USB webcam and the USB microphone get passed in. If you don't do that, it can't grab them, which is, I think, the, the basic premise of cubes. Um, so one of the core things of cubes is that you have these disposable cubes. So uh, who here gets PDFs from people, like on the internet, emails and all the rest? Yeah. Um, how well do you trust them? Do you perfectly trust all of them? Like, probably not. 
So what a disposable cube does is allows you to go through and view them in a cube that can, for example, have no internet access or anything like that. And the second you're finished viewing it or finished editing it or whatever, you, you click the close button and it's destroyed. And all the malware that somebody put all that time and effort into just goes away. Uh, and there's a Thunderbird integration. So if you have a Thunderbird, you can just open up the attachment, right click and say, oh yeah, no, I want this as a disposable VM. And it just runs. And that is very neat. And so as I mentioned earlier on, Cubes is built on building blocks. The disposable Cubes building blocks we use to build the trusted PDF um, utility. So as an aside, who here knows that printers update via printable documents, or some of them have the capability to do that? Like, who here prints un untrusted documents or documents you don't completely trust? Like, pretty much everyone on printers that generally have network hardware attached to them. So having a disposable cube that will go through and convert the, the untrusted PDF into a trusted PDF. So specifically, it does this by running a PDF renderer and outputting a byte stream of like basically a bitmap of this is every pixel. And then once it's got that, it encodes those pixels back into a PDF. Um, so the idea is that you can't go and, and exploit that uh, bitstream. Cube Manager is your, I mean, if this was enterprise land, it's your single pane of glass to manage your cube cloud. But like it's, yeah, it's a really nice application. Um, again, not perfect. It's an open source project. But you can see that you can run cubes with multiple templates. You can change where they're getting their networking from, as you saw earlier on with that giant slide with all the um, network VMs attached to it. Um, and it has the ability to do most of the standard operations for them. Recommended hardware. Um, so down the bottom, so you can buy a lot of those guys. So the Libram laptops or what have you, those are commercial. You can buy them. They run the core boot slash heads firmware, usually with some added extras to make it more secure. Um, in general, most things will run OK. You can check the HCL to check if your hardware will work fine. Um, my big recommendation is use in Intel integrated graphics. It makes everything just run in general. Um, and make sure that you have enough RAM. It's, it's fairly RAM heavy. Um, but it, a lot of the more standard things, and especially ThinkPads, work very well with that. And if you're more of the sort of hacker sort, you can go through and run the core boot slash heads firmware on your ThinkPad, and you can just flash it yourself and run the whole thing yourself. So it's an open source project. Lots of help is still wanted slash needed. A lot of it is sitting in Python bash land because it is, um, again, a set of building blocks. There are lots of things that are useful that can be built on this that don't require like, delving into the depths of the hypervisor or the kernel. And so even if you um, only have those sorts of high level skills, it is still very useful. Um, and as with every type of open source project, um, documentation, all the rest, is also very well um, received. So you can look at those cubes issues if you want to start out. Some of those things are fairly easy. Um, the upstream people are also very friendly. And if you don't have any of that time or what have you to go and help, um, and you want to donate monetarily, there's a donation link there. For more information, there's a cubes boff uh, Thursday at lunch outside room seven or inside room seven. Uh, sorry. Uh, there's a talk that's more of the behind the scenes of cubes on tomorrow. And there are some other links. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Any questions? So we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, this person here. You mentioned wanting help with Windows drivers. What is the state of Windows support under Cubes? Uh, glad that you mentioned that. Um, so uh, you. As of a couple of years ago, you could use Windows programs like you could Linux programs under Cubes. So you could have, for example, Microsoft Office sitting there on the left, and then a, a Vault or whatever on the right, or Firefox on the right. Um, that was the, the major issue with that is that the, um, the, the project moved on. The people maintaining the drivers stopped maintaining the drivers. But they are there, and they did work. Um, they were Windows 7, if memory serves, so they need to be updated for Windows 10. but they are there. Yeah. Uh, that being said, Windows will run as a more standard HVM VM if you want it to run, just without the fancy, fancy stuff. Yeah, sir. Anyone else? Oh, one. Thank you. 
Hello. Uh, would it be possible, I guess this is a limitation of Zen, to, to use a remote cube to interact with a local DOM0? So you have a, let's say, Orion uh, hmm. cube running vault, and you would like that that's running on your server or whatever, and you would only want to access it when you need it on your laptop. Yeah. Um, so the cubes upstream have, oh yeah, that's a very good suggestion. Uh, there is a, um, a whole presentation as to how they want to go and implement that, but that hasn't currently been implemented. If you think that's cool though, it is an open source project and they'd be more than happy to help you um, go and do that. Um, similarly, like you would find a lot of support around here. So. All good, uh, any other questions or are we out of time? Uh, got time for one or so more, two maybe. Anyone? Anyone? As a general thing, who here's learned some new things about cubes? Yeah, all good. Who here thinks cubes is pretty, pretty neat? Yeah, anyone thinking about trying it out? Yeah. Nice, nice to see. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.